And then my uncle gets on the phone. He goes, you are considered a princess in this country. And I was like, wait a second, what? When I was first adopted, my sister's friend looked over me and she says, now wait a second, is she black or does she just have a really good tan? <laughs> my sister said, this is my new little baby sister, Sarah. She's part West African and part white American. And they were like, oh, okay. I had found my birth mother's family when I was in uh, my first year of graduate school and my early 20s. So I found that she'd passed away of cancer. I really got to meet this amazing family and, and started to learn about my birth mother and I got to meet her sister, which was really, really cool. And then I realized, well, what was it like to be an African man in the 70s with a white woman in West Virginia having a child? Maybe I should give this guy a break, right? So the moment I got out of my own way and opened myself up and was like, wait a second, what has his life been like? Why don't I walk in his shoes for a moment? A whole new, it's like, <laughs> I don't know, it may sound crazy, but like this yellow brick road opened up, so to speak. So I wrote a letter, four days later, I get a phone call. And there's this woman on the other line and she says, hello, Sarah, this is your auntie Evelyn. How are you? And I froze. And then my uncle gets on the phone. He goes, oh, Sarah, we are so happy you've been found. Do you know who you are? And I'm like, I'm Sarah. He says, you are part of a royal family. Your great grandfather was a paramount chief. Your grandfather, your uncle runs a chiefdom of 45,000, now 70,000, you can be chief. You are considered a princess in this country. And I was like, wait a second, what? He said, we're gonna contact your father in Sierra Leone, he's gonna be so happy to meet you. I get off the airplane and I see my birth father sitting there and standing there actually, so statuesque and so nervous. And it's like his eyes were talking to me in, a mo in that moment is as if they were saying, please like me, please accept me, please like me. And it was so beautiful. We took a ferry over that night, stayed in a small hotel, and then there was a knock at the door the next morning from my father. And he gave me this beautiful green African dress. And he said, Sarah, I would love for you to wear this green African dress into our family's village tomorrow. And I said, I would love to. And as we arrive in the village, there are 100, 200, 300, hundreds of people to welcome me. And then all of a sudden, everyone parts and all the women of the village come forward wearing the same green dress that I had been given. And they were singing. They were singing, but a tang, 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 but a tang, tang, tang. Pana do, adu, way, pura, Sarah, go to. They were singing, we're preparing for Sarah. And I had never met anyone there in my entire life. I was literally pinching myself. And I, I hadn't won the basketball game. I wasn't the homecoming queen. I didn't, I just showed up and that was enough. And it was so exciting and so special. They had celebrations for the next couple days. And then I got to tour around the campus of Bumpe High School. And my grandfather helped build the school years ago. And I started to see what happened after an 11 year blood diamond war. I saw people with missing arms, missing legs. I saw the roof that had been ripped off the top of the dining hall. Um, and, and the reality set in that this is wonderful that I've come to meet my family, but I realized that's actually not what this trip is really about. back to the United States and go, oh gosh, I hope you guys work this out. I realized 
this is my family. This isn't the Blood Diamond movie that I can put paws on and just walk away. This is my family and we've got to do something. this didn't happen for no reason. For people of color and specifically African Americans, we don't often get taught because people don't know about the continent and we don't know about our, our African roots. And so we're only taught about slavery, which tends to make me go, oh gosh, not another slavery movie. Even though it's important part of our history, it's not all of it. And I think what can be great about this movie is that it can actually take us back to knowing that we didn't all come here as slaves. We were Africans, mothers, fathers, doctors, lawyers, healers, um, everybody, and then made slaves. And there's this missing piece that I feel like I want African Americans to know who we are, like where we all come from, because it's been so long and we've been disconnected, but it's really our origin.